Okay, good morning. Good morning. So Aditi, pronounce your last name for me. Aditi Goyo. Aditi Goyo, what a beautiful name. Well, I'm so glad that you can join me this morning because, you know, I was talking at the beginning of the week about the fairy code and seeing things really as they are and having to see things from a really clean space inside of yourself. And it occurred to me, well, you can't really do that if you also don't know you, right? If you don't see yourself clearly, how can you see the world clearly? So I know that there's a lot of different schools out there and that people can study and learn how to do soccer or dance, but you're a kind of student that studies meditation, right? Yes. What kind of meditation do you do? Um, so I started doing meditation with the Brahma Kumaris. It's, as you know, it's a world organization in over 190 countries. So they teach a very profound meditation. I feel all of the meditations are very profound, but in this meditation, it's more recognizing what is the world behind your eyes. Not the physical body, <clears throat> but what, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What is going on in your mind? Because I think the thought, that is the first step to doing anything. Even if I lift my hand or I speak, I'm pretty sure that there would be a thought in my mind that would direct my body to speak the words, to have those experiences and to imbibe those uh, experiences that I'm going through right now. So how old were you <clears throat> when you started learning meditation? And is that the first time that you really learned to med meditation? Yes, so I was around 16 years, uh, 16 years old. And my father used to tell me all the time, um, okay, go to this ashram to meditate. There, there's going to be arti and rituals. So I come from a Hindu background. My family is Hindu, not practicing, but we all, <clears throat> it's pretty general. It's not strict, uh, one particular religion. So I never used to, for me personally, I never wanted to do something outside, like worship of an idol. That's okay. That's If you get benefit from that, that's great. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted something inner. I wanted some personal transformation from inside. So I started going to this uh, Brahma Kumari's meditation center. And after that, I found that the study was so deep. It was such an internal work. And I could see the brothers and sisters that I came in contact with. They were working on themselves internally. Like that was really profound for me. And at that time, at 16 years of age, like nobody in my friend circle would have thought of meditation. They would be like, no, meditation is for older people. It's not for young people. <laughs> but it's for everybody. It's for everyone. Anybody can start even at any age. Even if you're five years old, you can learn to meditate. Yes. Right? And my nephew is, I think, around 11 months old. And my sister-in-law tells me that whenever you sing a prayer to him every night, the night you sing a prayer, he sleeps beautifully. <laughs> so, I mean, it does impact everyone. <laughs> yes, yes. So you were 16 when you started and you, you've written a book. Yes. Right? And what really caught my eye was the title of this book, Playing with Cancer, right? That's not, the, those aren't words that you would normally orient with an experience <laughs> like that. So how old were you when you went through that experience? So um, my book is called Playing with Cancer at age 13. I was 13, year, 13 years old when I had cancer. Um, the only thing that concerned me was going back to school and meeting my friends. <laughs> I did not worry about going into surgery or the chemotherapy. <laughs> and when I was writing the book, I didn't want the title to be aggressive, like kicking cancer or beating cancer, or struggling with cancer. No, because I enjoyed it. I mean, 
I got off from school for like six months. That's, that was not a happy time for me, where that would have been for many people if they got off from school. But I was always looking forward to going back to school and meeting my friends and just getting up again and getting stronger again. So that's why I chose like playing with cancer so that cancer should not be something that you should be afraid of. If you have the will and the power, you can go through it. And of course, with the support system, yes, you can. So you went through that whole experience and then a few years after that said, I need to work on myself even more. Mm -hmm. Even though you'd already had this very kind of powerful experience at a young age. But that, I mean, so life comes at you, you can grow that way or you can choose to grow with study, right? So that's amazing. So tell me, you've been studying for, how old are you now? Uh, I am, I'm going to be 20 this year in September. Okay. So you've been studying for a couple of years now. And have you noticed how it's helped you? Yes. (laughs) Tell me, what's, what's something that you've noticed how your life has changed because of the the work that you've done on you so um i would go back just a little bit uh when i had cancer after that when i came back to school of course i I didn't have any hair so i was very cautious about my appearance before but after cancer i was like i don't really care how i look i just want to do well be well i just want to take care of my health so that started to melt down my uh consciousness of my physical appearance and then when I started doing the meditation there was a kind of softness I felt in me Um, because earlier I when I talk it was I'm not proud to say this but it wasn't the best words that came out of my mind (laughs) I mean with the tone that I used it was very harsh and aggressive because I was kind of putting a defense around me. So if anyone would say anything to me, I would get defensive. I would respond back instantly. But after meditation, I realized that it's not my karma to do that. It's If they want to say anything, it's their karma. What I can do for me and for them is to become softer, go inside, and respond from that place, not react. There's a, a, I'm reminded of this wonderful quote that says, uh, between action and reaction, there's a space. And in mm. that space is our power to decide who we want to become. Yes. So you've claimed that space. <laughs> that space <laughs> is yours now. I need to travel, <laughs> but yes, I'm moving along. <laughs> Well, and has has your family noticed a change in you too? Yes. I think it really shows through the cooking as well. I didn't used to cook before, but now I do cook my own food. Um, I offer uh, good vibrations into the food. And as my meditation becomes stronger, as my personality becomes to transform, the food also changes. The vibrations of the food changes. So it it was a code... um, in the text that we read at the Brahma Kumaris, that when you change, everyone changes around you. So I can feel when I do the meditation, when I work on myself, other people begin to notice and their behavior changes. It's not uh, that they would meditate all the time or they would follow the same principles I do, but their behavior changes. The vibrations in the atmosphere, it changes. Well, well, if anybody's ever been in a a room with an angry person that walks in, everybody knows that we carry these vibrations with us, (laughs) Mm -hmm. right? Everybody gets a little more tense, a little more on edge. And it's the same thing with a really powerful, peaceful person walks in the room with a big smile on their face. Yeah, just like in this room, we have fairy Jenna Bell. You're a true fairy. <laughs> so anytime I see you, I feel 
to be an angel, to be a fairy, just like you. Um, I always say fairies are angels in training. <laughs> <laughs> well, fairies have to work on themselves too, right? One of the things I love about the kind of meditation that you do is that it's an, a meditation that you do with your eyes wide open. Because, and I, I thought that, you know, if you're in a very tense situation, let's say there's a bunch of people in a board meeting and it gets really tense, you can't say, hold on a second, guys, let me go into the corner and meditate and calm down for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the way that life operates, it doesn't really give you room to do that. So the practice of meditating with your eyes wide open allows you to practice holding on to that space as you're moving through the world and interacting with people, right? So this internal world that you're talking about, you, you kind of like, like I said, claim it. You claim it, That's your, that you're the calm within this whole storm around you. And I think there's probably a lot of people and kids that could really see the value of that right now. Right? There's so much happening in the world and people are pretty upset. Yes, one of the things I struggled in the past few months is to become a friend of my become become a friend of my own self. I was happy with myself, but not to the point that I would enjoy my company. And this lockdown has told me that I can enjoy my company if I keep myself busy, if I keep churning the knowledge that I gain, if I keep working on my inner self, writing, I do a journaling now, I started reading books. So spending time with the self, you can find your inner child. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Absolutely. I'm also... Just hearing that reminded of um, one of the greatest things that I was ever told, I think, that always stuck with me had to do with being merciful to yourself as well. And I remember asking a teacher, what, well, what does that mean? I know what it would mean to be a friend to myself, but what does it mean to be merciful? And the teacher said um, to not do anything or perform any action that would go against your greater self. Mm. So as we're kind of moving through and, and taking care of ourselves, and there's so many different ways to do it. Like you said, you can journal, you can take time to nourish, you can read good books, you could listen to great commentary, like the one we're creating right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also as you're moving through, not to do anything and be really mindful with everything that you're doing, not to go against who you really want to be, right? That's so true. And a big part of that, I think, is forgiveness for what you have done earlier. Yes, absolutely. So you said that you've changed how you interact with people and you've let that wall of defensiveness go down. Did you have to go through a period of forgiving yourself for that, those yes. moments? I still do. Sometimes I feel, why did I do that? <laughs> but a lot of times I'm reminded that what you did at that moment, that was the best you could do. And that was the best situation that happened. It could not have been better. So why do I keep going in the past? If it could not have been better, then I come back to the present moment. Now, what do I want to do? Now, let's do better. Now let's create better vibrations. So yeah. that's how I pull myself back. Yeah, there's, um, who was that? I think it was Ben Franklin or <laughs> someone like that is why do good when you can do better? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Who is your favorite, favorite person in the world? Mm. I would say the divine being. Like it's not a figure, it's not a person in a human body, it's not someone mystical. And I was, this conception was in my mind even before I started meditating, that there's always, 
there, there will always be an invisible friend who I can talk to. And I consider that to be the divine. Um, and I can just share my feelings with. Um, the divine would never judge me. It was always accepting an unconditional love. And even if I wanted to cry, I could go and talk to the divine and cry. And he would not tell my stories to anyone else. <laughs> so And the divine yeah. and some kids that might be listening, when you hear the word divine, it's also what people call God, right? God, yeah. God, the higher power, the spirit, the one energy that unites us all that runs through each and one of us. But just that sacred point of light to which we can concentrate on and direct our mind and focus. So how does that help you when you think of God? Um, think of, sorry, can you repeat when you're that? Thinking, when you're thinking of God, and you're not just thinking of God, you're having a relationship with God, right? the way you're talking to, we, to to God and sharing and kind of processing different things with God, right? Right. So um, <clears throat> that's a great point. Once I noted down, so I was very troubled for a few days that, okay, I am um, enjoying the company of my friends. I am enjoying the company of my phone. I was keep I kept checking my phone if there are any notifications, but I, it just bothered me because that's not my true self. So I noted down those things, the things that bothered me, what they gave me, and what was lacking in myself. And the one thing that was lacking in myself was companionship. So I turned to God and I was like, okay, now you're my friend. And he would agree. There was no hesitation from his side. So whenever I would take a walk, I would, okay, God, let's go for a walk. <laughs> when I wanted a mother, I wanted God to be with me. Can you take care of me? I'm not feeling so well right now. Father, um, okay, help me with my homework. I can't do this alone. You've got to help me. Like You really do. I have an exam coming up. <laughs> a teacher. <laughs> You ask God to help you with your tests? Yes. <laughs> Isn't that, that a fair? Way? I don't know that that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, if everyone could ask the help of God, it would be fair. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> and I'm guessing, I know the world would be a better place if everybody felt like you did. <laughs> Had that kind of relationship. And seeing yeah. even how much it's changed you, right? Right, because it's not me. I have to get rid of the, the consciousness that I am doing everything because it, it can become very heavy sometimes. If I say something bad, it's on me. If I do something good over a period of time, it can be a huge ego. So I want to realize that there's an inner world and I can have relationship with the God, with the divine, with the energy, with the supreme power. And I can surrender to that. I don't have to be bound into my physical consciousness. I think you just made a really important point also about when we're sharing that experience with God, God not only helps carry those, those burdens but also holds a lot of the, the good stuff too. So we don't get attached to it. It doesn't touch our ego. You know, if I say, well, you know, that was, that was God helping me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it alone. I can't take all the credit. I can't, you know, absorb all that because then, you know, they say you shouldn't allow, um, you know, negative comments or positive comments to shake you. That's mm -hmm. what true being truly stable is, right? Because mm -hmm. if somebody says something really bad to you and you allow it to hurt your feelings and get upset, you're probably going to feel really, really 
good when somebody says something really positive to you, but then you're always going to be fluctuating depending on what's going on on the outside coming in. And that's very frustrating. What's that? Yes. That's very frustrating over a period of time when the mood goes like this. Yes. Yeah. I want it to be like this. It's (laughs) difficult, but it's a process. Yes. And and it's better, not just for you, but for everybody. I want to go back to what you were saying about the vibrations and the food and that now you've started to cook. Because I'm thinking right now with the pandemic, there's so many more people cooking at home now, whereas before they would go out to eat a lot, they would order food. And it just got me thinking, we don't know the vibrations going into those (laughs) foods of who's cooking. (laughs) Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. So now that people are at home and they're cooking, it's a great thing to actually talk about and share for people to be a little bit more mindful about how they are um, preparing their food, the kind of thoughts and feelings. Is there something that you do or something, some kind of music you listen to? Or how do you stay in that really good space while you're preparing your food? Um, so sometimes it would be me alone. Sometimes it would be uh, my relatives with me, my brother or my sister-in-law cooking with me. So the one thing that's really crucial to cooking is to remain in, in a happy mood. If, if, if I'm sad and I want to cook, then I would play a meditation music to soften me down and to lower the vibrations of sadness and to just emerge a more gentle feeling in me and when I cook that food before eating I would send in purest vibrations like I would maybe take it to the a region of white light where there's just purity and peace and just soak the food in that because when I eat it there's a lot of contentment so you're using your imagination then yes imagination yeah so you're imagining that you're holding this food and, and there's white light that's around it. Mm-hmm. See, imagine it's like it's an amazing tool. Yes. <laughs> you know, kids are really good at using their imagination. I bet kids would be really good at this too. Yes. Even if they're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be something fancy. It could be an apple oh. you're about to eat, right? Could you do the same thing with an apple? Of course, you can cut it up, you can take it to the white light or wherever you want, surround it with pink light, surround it with strawberries flying everywhere, um, Ooh, I love strawberries flying everywhere, <laughs> M&Ms, and you feel all that good stuff in that peanut butter sandwich. Okay, well, easy on the M&Ms, it. though, because <laughs> I answer to the tooth fairy as well, and she oh. wants to make sure that if kids are going to eat that, they've got to brush their teeth after, okay? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so just fill all that goodness, that joy, and eat it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, how often do you is, do you go to a, a like a class, or is this something that you practice every day? Uh, meditation. Mm-hmm. So um, I used to go to a class. It was, um, and when I used to enter the classroom, it was like everyone there was angels walking, you know, and I felt like an angel walking into the class and getting the knowledge and everything. But now since the pandemic, I am home, but I do have a routine that I want to stick to. Sometimes I don't because I am evolving. I am still processing my thoughts, but when I do attend the class online, it's all online. I listen to it very attentively to what's being offered here. So it's, um, it's a Raj Yoga class, Raj Yoga meditation class. And <clears throat> uh, Sister Jenna, who is my spiritual mentor, um, she has meditation museums here in Virginia, and she does a spiritual vaccine um, every day, 6.30 p.m. EDT. And that's been really helpful. In the mornings, they do a class that's very powerful. Just looking into her eyes and just getting those feelings, it feeds the soul. It's very enriching. And I think that that's also another excellent point, which is sometimes it's hard to do on your own 
to always kind of pull those good thoughts or, or put some newness in our imagination around what we need to do or what we need to work on today, right? Because right. it can be boring to work on the same thing all the time, but there's all sorts of different things that we can work on using our imagination. Mm-hmm. So, and we can uh, always invite our friends, our parents, like, hey, do you want to go outside for a walk? And we can talk about the feelings that I'm going through. Or do you want to tell me how you're feeling right now? Maybe we can process that together. So it's just nice to have that human connection and that processing going on together. And that influence, I was talking about that also in another talk I was giving, that we do have influence over each other. Mm-hmm. So it's really important yes. that we fill our, our time and space up with really good thoughts and good people, people that are going to make us feel safe, and good right Right. i'm sure that you are a wonderful friend and a wonderful daughter and sister because of you you've worked so hard on yourself that i'm sure it makes them even think about what they could do to be more like you and i'm glad that fairy jennabelle here (laughs) has you as a friend now too Thank you. I'm so glad to be your friend. <laughs> and I can't give all the credit to myself. It's God with me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and you're, you just set the example for everyone. <laughs> God is also doing this interview with you. I'm just mm-hmm. here to play with my wings. <laughs> all right. Well, we're getting ready to close up. Um, on our 30 minutes, um, would you like to do a little meditation dialogue for us? Could you do that? Just using your imagination and I'll use my imagination as I listen to you. Great, and we can maybe even do it together. I don't have to do it all alone. So maybe you can fill in whenever you'd like. Yeah, (laughs) I love that. We're gonna be (laughs) co-meditators. Yes. Okay, do you want me to start or do you want to start? You can start. Okay, so let's see. Listening to the sounds of the room around you, I want you to become really aware of where you're at. And while you're sitting there, I want you to be aware of the weight of your body in the chair that you're sitting in. Is it heavy? Is it light? Can you feel it? Can you feel your body sitting in this room? I want you to pull all of that attention all the way up to your eyes. And I want you to think about the space right behind your eyes. I want you to imagine that right behind those beautiful eyes is this sparkling star. That's what makes your eyes sparkle. When you're feeling really good, that star behind the eyes sparkles even more. I want you to imagine that as this star, you're aware that you're driving your body. The way you move, the way you interact with others, it's all coming from this very still, beautiful, sparkling star that is you. And it floats there. It doesn't need wings. It's perfect and brilliant, just the way it is. And you've always been here. And staying in this state of awareness, I am realizing that I am full. I am filled 
with all the good qualities that fairies have. I am filled with all the good qualities that the angels possess. I am filled with all the powers that I need to overcome anything, anything. And I have a strong relationship with God. The ocean of love. It's within me. I can tap into that space of abundance. Travel to God. And gain the love, the peace, the joy and the bliss that I would want. And if I have any discomfort in the body, in the mind, or with relationships with people, if I made a boo-boo, I can ask God to correct that. Or I can ask God to fill that space with sparkles, different colored sparkles, to smoothen out the energy, to uplift the energy. That dust, that sparkle, It's with you always. Even when you come back into the room, even when you get up off your chair, even when you're cooking, even when you're eating your peanut butter sandwich, all of that light, all of the sparkle, all of the fairy dust of God is always with you. And it's there for you to use whenever you need it. Or maybe just if you need a rest, you can go to that space and take a rest. So come back into the room. Become aware of your body again. The feeling of your body, the weight of it in the chair. The beautiful room you're sitting in and all the beautiful sparkling faces around you. We can actually bring all that greatness into our relationships too. Uh, DT, thank you so much for such a wonderful talk this morning. What a great way to start the day. Exactly. I could never have been happier. <laughs> Talking well, to fairies in the morning. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, like I always say, if you keep me in your heart and I keep you in my heart, then we're never really apart. So I'm going to stay with you all day and you're going to stay with me in my great. heart. Okay. I'm going to keep you in my heart yes. and sparkle that fairy dust yes. wherever I go. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All right, everyone. There's a lot more. Um, there's some on-demand commentaries and the Meditation Museum. Um, at the end of this video, um, I'll be posting it on demand and there'll be a link there. So there's always some great commentaries to help you along your journey. Um, and if you, and all the classes that they give on meditation are free, which is amazing. So please, everybody go there and, and get whatever you need to keep growing and learning. And we're all with you and all the fairies are with you and the Adities of the world are with you too, right? Yes. <laughs> all right, everybody, have a wonderful day.
Bye. Bye.